give you honor. You have your way. Even by your spirit in this place. That everything we do, we do it all to the honor of you and give you every all glory. I pray that I decrease, that you increase. And Lord, no distractions are going to stop us from pressing forward to serve you, to worship in you, to praise in you, God. Hallelujah. You are our everything. And we say, as you said in your word, everything passes away, but your word will always stand. And Lord, I pray that, that word is preached today with uncompromising, with power, uh, with love, and with understanding. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And we all said amen. 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 So today's topic is still, I want to live right, <clears throat> um, but something is holding me back. My subtopic is the unwelcome intruder. The unwelcome intruder is the subtopic. We come from Romans chapter 7, verse 14. We started an overview on last week and we'll be here for a couple of weeks. All right, so we're going, I need everybody to go to Romans chapter 7, verse 14. We're coming out of the Amplified. This is the same scriptures we did last week on 7 and 14. I mean, 7, 14 and 15. I'm just going to go further a little bit deeper. So this is actually my first lesson um, on this topic. The topic is, I want to live right, but something is holding me back. The subtopic is the unwelcome intruder. All right, Romans 7, 14 reads this. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am a creature of the flesh, worldly, self-reliant, carnal, and unspiritual, Sold into slavery to sin and serving under its control. For I do not understand my own action. I am baffled and bewildered by them. I do not practice what I want to do, but I am doing the very thing I hate and yielding to my human nature, my worldliness, my sinful capacity. So we understand the scriptures coming from our Paul. Paul is talking. Paul's having problems in this part. Earlier, we know we talked, he talked to the uh, unbelievers and he made a believer statement. He says, now you have to understand, I want to do right, but it, it, it's something that's stopping me. It's something that's holding me back. And, and, and I know people say, but not Paul. Why not Paul? Everybody was going through. Everybody goes through. I don't care who you are is going to go through all. It, it, tell you, everybody's going to go through. I, I just want everybody to understand it. And you're going to have a fight within yourself. Everyone's going to fight. Every day there is a fight. I put it that way. Every day there is a fight. That's why Paul said, "What I die daily." There you go. I die daily. So then, so God chose Paul. Paul's an apostle. He's talking to the Romans. Paul saw him on Damascus Road. God, he went blind. He said, "Going to suffer." For his name's sake, this is all in Acts, right? Paul and Romans don't have it together still. I want everybody to know this. Things that Paul has done and things that you have done does not go away. Does that make sense? Things that you've done, things that Paul done didn't go away. Sin has consequences. You got it? Oh, like sin has consequences. Um, you can walk up here and, and, and get saved and been a murderer or a liar, a cheater, <clears throat> just not living morally right. You get saved, does not change what you've done. So just because you're a murderer or all these other sins, you come and ask God to forgive you, you say, I'll forgive you for all your sins. It's not going to stop you from not going to the penitentiary, not going to jail. Uh, there are all, always consequences in everything you do. I want him, see, for some reason, we believe because we have Christ in us, that we sin, we should be okay because he paid it in full. That is not a, a true statement when it comes to the consequences of your sin. I, I want everybody to understand. There's, y'all, y'all with me? Uncle, how holy you cannot, you can fast. The, the Bible said David fasted. His baby, his baby was, um, was sick. David fasted that the baby would live. God already told him that baby was going to live. He fasted. He's a man after God's own heart. You know what happened? Baby died. Not David's baby. Yes, baby. Moses said how many times? And we know that really meant something was that one time. God said, don't do it. He did it. What happens? He gets in the promised land. 
I, I, I just want everybody, I, I'm setting the groundwork to let you know, I don't care if your name's written in the Bible or not the Bible, there are consequences for your sins. I know people don't want to talk about it, but you know, sin does stop a person from getting to heaven. Sin does, uh, the, the, the Bible says this, for the wages is death. But the gift of God is eternal. But the wages of sin, the more you sin. And, and I, I like it. So Paul, you know, we talked about the law, the spiritual law. They talked about in verse 14 and verse 15. So, um, and I, I love this scripture. Everybody says this. We are not under the law anymore. We are under what? Let's read that scripture. I'm going to read Romans 6 and 14. Everyone likes to, to quote this scripture. Um, when I talk to people, they like to use this scripture with me. And I believe in what we are today. A, po- a lot of people are memorizing or quoting scriptures, but not knowing what it really means. You can quote a scripture all day long. The enemy can quote a scripture. But if you don't apply the scripture to your life, it doesn't mean anything. Okay. So Romans 6 and 14, it says, oh, I'm sorry. I read this from King James. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Okay. Go to King James for me, if you don't mind. King James version uh, 6, 14. Yes. King James. Romans 6 and 14 in the King James. Um. My disclaimer is this. Um, I believe being a word person. I believe in teaching what the word actually means and the definition of the word because the wrong word can change a whole lot of things. As Eve that, the Satan just changed one word and it can change everything. So I, I believe in teaching line upon line and precept upon precept. I want everybody to understand that. And it says in Romans 6, 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law. <clears throat> but what? Under grace. I like that. Now, that sounds good. I'm not under the law anymore. I'm under grace. Y'all believe that? Yeah. Why y'all believe that? That's what the word says. Now, here's the problem we have. What is the definition of grace? I, I love this. You know, the, the, word, the word grace right there was used 156 times. In the New Testament, this is one word. The other word, grace, has one other definition. It's used just one time. So grace has really, has a whole lot of different meanings. In the Greek, instead of the one word that's used in grace, I forgot, I think it's in Romans 10 or something like that. That's totally different. The definition is, is, is different. But every word in grace is, is, it has the same meaning, but as a meaning, they have meanings within the meanings. And I know, and I'm not going to ask you the question, People always say, well, grace means unmerited favor. That's one meaning. That's not the meaning that it means in here. The meaning in this scripture, it means divine influence. So now, I'm not under the law anymore. I'm under grace. I'm under divine influence, meaning I take straight orders from who? From God. Uh, right? No more law. Well, when you say, because the law is going to tell you where you sin it. So I'm moving from one spot so in, now, which spot is better? Would you rather be under the law or would you rather be under divine influence? I like that. Which one is harder? Yeah. Let me give you an example of what Christ says. He says, you know what? I know that, that Moses talks about, I know that y'all think um, about Adultery and the Bible says in adultery in Leviticus and in Deuteronomy that anybody who commit adultery should be killed, the man and the woman. That's what the Bible says. He says, but no, that's when you have adultery. Christ said, no, not, I don't, we don't do it anymore. He says, I believe you look upon a woman, you commit adultery. Huh? You mean I went from actually doing the act? Now if I look upon a woman, I committed, that's what he said. Yes. You know, I know a lot of more. Yeah, you're under divine influence. You're under grace. I mean, everybody say, I'm under grace. I'm under grace. Yeah. Well, what did he say to you then? Because Christ did not lower the standard. 
He raised the standard. Now love God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. Back in the day, eye for an eye. Uh, truth for, uh, now Jesus says, no. He says, now what I want you to do is love your neighbor as thyself. What? What you mean? Yes, love your neighbor. I didn't have to do that up on the law. But under divine influence, he said I have to love. I want, I want, I want everybody to understand it. Now, he said, if you, I hang everything on these two laws. Because if you could understand what love really is with him, then you understand what love is with you. You wouldn't treat people the way you treat them. You wouldn't talk the way you talk to them. You wouldn't behave the way you behave to them. Amen. When, when a brother's in need, guess what you do? You give to your brother. That's no gender. Amen. When, the, when your brother does something against you, what love covers the what? A multitude of sins. Uh, look, we, he says, Jesus says, how many, Peter said, how many times shall I forgive? He says, what? Seven times seven. That's a whole lot of times. Everything, everything is about love. That's divine influence. Now, how many people live up under divine influence? Just that part. I'm not even talking about the other things. It's a whole lot of things I can point out today. Just talking about this love part. I, I really want y'all to understand that we miss it when we say we love God but treat people like doo-doo. It, 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 it's very interesting when we say we love God, but you're always constantly talking about an individual. Not be quick to pray for him. Not be quick. I love when people say, well, God have mercy on me. Why would God have mercy on you when you don't have mercy on anyone else? Why you want mercy? Oh, new mercy every day. You, this, you mad at somebody for the same thing over a year ago, two years ago. Why would God give you mercy and you don't get mercy? He said, well, he wouldn't do that. Well, he gave a parable. I love when people say what he wouldn't do. Quit saying what he wouldn't do if you don't know what he would do. If you don't know the word and you have no evidence, say, you know what? I just don't know. I'm just saying what I think it says. The Bible says, uh, uh, quote me if I'm wrong. There was a man who owed a lot to another man. And he couldn't pay. He, they locked him up in jail. The man was free. And then a man owed him a fraction, another man, the man who was freed, owed him a fraction of way what he owed. And the man sit there and had him arrested. And Christ says, wait a minute, hold on now. You were just released from your debt of all this money you owe. And now what you, the first thing you do is once you're released, you don't go out and tell that and have someone else put in jail because they owe you just 50 cents. You know, you know what Christ did? So they said, the man who owed, you put him back in jail. Because Christ, I want everybody to know, Christ ain't just one to do for you and you're not going to do for someone else. If y'all believe that, y'all don't know it's Christ. You, under, you understand that? Yes, sir. Yeah, no don't have no respect to person. He going. I mean, I, I don't care who you are. If you love God with all your heart, and you can do that, but if you don't love your neighbor, you're missing it. You're not going to make it because God is not going to let you in treating everybody bad. You know, God, it just doesn't work that way. You got it? All right, then. So now that, that was just a precursor. Let's talk about the message. I want to now talk about the intruder. I love the intruder. An intruder does slip into you and just messing you around, just messing you up. The intruder is stopping you from moving forward in Christ. The intruder is stopping you from doing everything God wants you to do. And I, I'm, I'm talking about not as far as working for God spiritually. I'm just talking about living right. The intruder is stopping you from living right. Does anybody have an intruder in them right now? Oh, that's good. Do you have an intruder? Can you identify the intruder that's in you? It's easy to say I have an intruder, but what is the intruder? Name it. I, 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 it, I know y'all say, well, Christ didn't name things. Christ went to the man and says, who are you? He said, I'm legion. <laughs> he said, I'm legion. I, I, I'm many. So let's go to James. I know everyone loves James. is a hard guy. James did not play. James chapter one, we're going to. We're going back to the Amplified. So I can really explain to you about the intruder. So today... The unwelcome intruder, because guess what? I did not want it, it to come in. 
I know I have done some things in my life, but I did not know that it would affect my life. Let me say it again. I've done a lot of things in my life. However, I did not know that it would affect my life. If I knew that it would affect my life like this, I never would have done it. Y'all got it? If I knew this one thing that I did is going to cause all these problems, I never would have done it. If I knew having friends with this one person would cause all these problems, I never would have started the relationship. You say, well, how do you know? Easy. The Bible says be led by the Spirit. If the Spirit say, uh-uh, guess what we do? Walk away. The Holy Spirit always give you a way out. If you don't take it, that's not his fault. He gives you a way of escape in any situation, even in traffic. Man, I'm telling you, I was going down the road, and I came, and I was on Woods app, and I was driving. I was in four wheel on Woods app, and they kept saying to do this, and it's all this traffic. I was coming. I didn't see it, and all of a sudden, I didn't understand it. Do I take this way or take this way? Because this way was a toll road, and this way wasn't. It was just a, the stand on whatever highway that was. And I was like in the middle, and you know I'm not a good driver. I didn't need no confirmation about that. <laughs> so I I was at that little, you know how they have the point there? And, and so I was like in the medium, kind of, and all these cars were behind me, and I just went over here. I, was just, I just, I was a late listener. And I went over here. And I'm like, oh, Lord. And was didn't like, like correct me. I know what was was telling me to do. Is it was? Thank you. It's ways. Yeah, it don't spell it right. If it's W A Y, it would say ways. But, and so, all of a sudden, when I was on there, I seen all these cars back to a big old accident. I said, Thank you, Holy Spirit, because, you know, and then the way He told me to get off right there, I said, Oh my goodness, I never would have made it. But if it hadn't, see, the Holy Spirit loves all of us so much. He'll, he'll, he can avoid traffic in your life if you listen to Him. He, in every area of your life, he will direct you in everything. And so I, I say that because even what we call the smallest things, he's in, he's in that too. He's not only in the big things, he's in the small things also. Amen? Because it's, it's hard to get stuck in traffic when you have no gas either. Amen. So, <laughs> James 1, did I give you the verse? No. Verse 13. Chapter 1, verse 13, arena and amplified. Y'all ready? I'm, we're going to stay on this verse. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For temptation does not originate from God, but from our, from our, okay, let's see. Everybody's not with me. Let's start over. No, okay. I'm from Jam and James. I'm in chapter 1, verse 13. Does everybody see that? Are y'all with me now? All right. Now let's start over. Let no one say when he is tempted, I have been tempted by. For temptation does not originate from God, but from our own. Whose flaws? Your neighbor's flaws. The person behind you flaws. The person in front of you flaws. My flaws. You can't blame the preacher for your flaws. Can you blame your wife for your flaws? Can you blame your husband for your flaws? Can you blame your girlfriend for your flaws? Your boyfriend for your flaws. Can you blame your parents for your flaws? They are, what? There you go. Somebody said that. They're your flaws. <laughs> yeah, 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 your flaws. I want you to know you can't blame nobody but you. Are y'all with me now? Now the thing about it is, is, we have flaws, right? But if we don't control our flaws, they'll kill us. We have flaws. We're supposed to control our flaws. We have flaws. We have flaws. We are supposed to control our flaws. How is that? He said, I have given you dominion over sin. I understand the first thing that whatever I'm going through, I'm about to, he has given me dominion, meaning I have 
full authority over what I do. It's up to me to make the right choice. But he's getting, when Christ died on the cross, the devil has no more rights over me now that I have authority. And it is victory only in, amen. So, now the reason why I can't control my flaws is the one thing that's always preached in Galatians chapter 5, 23 and 24. The fruit of the spirit, one of them is tempered in the King James, and everybody says self-control. Oh man, I have flaws and I will keep having the problems because I don't have ah, the unwelcome intruder keep coming in because I have no self-control. I say what I want to say. Man, I can't control these words. I, 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 I can't stop doing this one thing. I can't stop giving hand gestures and, and giving people, I'm um, speaking to them. With my hands, I, I I have no control over that. When someone cuts me off, I don't have no control over that, right? I, I I I'm about to get in trouble with the boss, so I am going to lie. I have no control over the lie. The lie brings what? More lies. You know, the best thing about lying is you have to take a record of your lie because you have to lie for that lie. Keep on lying. If you don't watch, you forget what you lie. So you need a book of lies. You have a journal of things. You need to have a book of lies. Because <laughs> you just are a liar. You don't have some control. I, I went for one drink and had two. Then I had three. Then I had four. Why well, you can't stop? I have no self-control. He didn't say you couldn't, couldn't do anything. He said, keep my soul, but I have no control to stop. If I know my flaw is with this one thing, what I do? That's right. Guess what? Just because that's your flaw don't mean that's my flaw. I'm controlled in heaven. I, I don't drink. I haven't one drink. You understand that? If you have a problem with, with talking out um, to people in a bad way or cursing, and you can't control that, the best way to do is don't say nothing at all. I know they say if you don't have nothing good to say, don't say it all. But sometimes y'all good that y'all think y'all going to say, it's bad anyway. I, 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 y'all, this is such a big thing because I want everybody to understand I'm having problems because of my flaws and, I, and everyone have flaws and it's not bothering them. It's not bothering these ministers over here the problem I'm having, I have no self-control. So because I have no self-control, I'm letting this intruder come into me and it's ruining my life. It's intruder. And every time I want to do something good, I want to live right. This intruder has me captive and it's holding me back. Even though God set me free. The key is, in his disclaimer, is this, where the spirit of the Lord is. See, we forget, you have to, you have to put everything together. Only what, if the spirit of the Lord is not in you and not operating in you, you're right. There is no freedom. You're locked down. Because if the spirit of the Lord was there, he would tell you to leave. He'll tell you to run from anything that appears evil. He'll tell you to run from anything that does not look like him. He'll tell you this. He says, evil will overtake you. He says to run. But but you have dominion over it. But if you got to get out the way, you got to move. Y'all y'all with me on that? Jesus never said do it by yourself. If you're by yourself and everybody else around you um, is doing the wrong thing, he says leave. Jesus would never send nobody by themselves. He sent them out two by two. And if you're not there to witness, do not ever go places and say, I'm going to go to this house. I know they're doing wrong. And I'm going to go and I'm going to be a witness to them. That sounds good. If God didn't send you, they're going to beat you down. I want, I, let me say that. I love it when people always tell me I'm there to witness. It's a lie, but they tell me that. I said, oh, you're not a witness to them. What scripture are you using to witness to them? I don't need no scripture. It, I, I'm just going to just talk to them. Does that make any sense? What power do you have just talking to him? Because all I know, the power is in Christ Jesus. 
if I'm going to witness somebody, he's already prepared me to be a witness. Now, if I'm not reading my word in the last week, two weeks, three weeks, and never read it, how can I really be a witness? I can tell my testimony, but I don't know what the word says. The Bible says there is power only in the word of God. I believe tradition and us talking to ourselves has gotten us way to what the word actually is saying and teaching us how to live a life that's for Christ. We have made up things. We watered the word down. We believe stuff that's not even in the word of God. You know what? And we don't know because why? We're not looking up for ourselves. So you're arguing with someone who's reading the word and you are with them and, and I'll look at you and what evidence do you have? Then they'll get mad at you because you're reading the word. And they should get mad at me for reading the word. You know why? Because they don't have the right spirit. Listen, if they don't have the right spirit and you don't have the right word, well, you know what you do? No, I just close the Bible and move on. Because I don't want to, I don't want to go back and debate about the word. Let me tell you something. Christ don't need no help with proving his word to be true. It took a long time to learn that. And I'm telling you something, that's a lot of things that I was doing back in the day, debating the word, and Christ never told me that. I'm not going to sit and argue about what the word says, especially if you don't know it. And I read a scripture last week, it says, don't throw pearls into the swine. And it, it went on, oh, I wish I knew the verse. It went on and talked about just not pearl. It said, no, oh, it said something for pearls, but it said, if you throw pearls to the swine, someone Google that for me. Google up pearls for a swine. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know it offhand. I want to show you something that I've never seen it. And I read it from the King James Version. And when you have it, just let me know. Um, um, someone has to yeah, read it for me because I'm not too too swift on going to a different scripture right now. On the <laughs> I know I have it on here, but I need someone to come tell me what scripture is it. Present to the swine. Don't look around and think somebody else is looking it up. You just Google in the Bible, casting pearls into the swine. Matthew 7, 6. Can you read it for me? Oh, yes. King James. There you go. Do not give that which is holy. Holy. Hold on. Do not give that which is holy unto the dog. Well, I want you to listen to this. Do not give that which is holy to the dogs. Wait, hold on. First of all, somebody's a dog. Okay, do not give that which is holy to the dogs. Okay, watch. Neither cast ye the pearls unto the swine. Watch it. Watch it. Hold on. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Okay, do not. Say it again. Oh. Neither cast ye ye your pearls before swine. Watch this. No, no, we all people always quote that to me. I say they said don't cast them. It's the reason why. Watch this. And, and I got this. I never read it, but watch what it said. What after that? What does it say? Hold on, hold on. Watch this. Least they chop. They going to you giving a pearl. Watch this. They're going to travel under their feet. Now watch the danger in this. What is after that? And they're going to come after you. They're going to turn against and rend you. No, no, what it's saying is they're going to attack you. The, 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 you cast the pearls before the swine. They're going to trap on it and they're going to come after you. Oh, that's something else. What you've done now is when he turns against you and it's coming out. See, no one never tell you that. It's coming after you have you ever told someone what the word said? Yes, sir. Is, is that you saying, like, don't do this, and then you turn around and do it, and they say, See, you told me not to do it, but you're doing it. Oh, no, no, no. We still see first up, and start thinking about it, start talking about the dogs. Then you sit down, the pearl is, I'm giving you the word, I'm giving you something that's Christ, and I know you're not saved. And they, but then after you give it to him, and he says, I didn't tell you to give it to him. All of a sudden, they're going to use that. You'll be on Facebook. I just say it like this. And, uh, they're going to come against you and so-and-so did this and, they, and talk about you because of what you've done. You thought that it was good, but no, they're going to use it against you. You have to be very careful who you get a word to. 
And, and people don't understand. You have to be careful in everything that you do. And I want to, I want you to understand this. If you ever study um, Ephesians six, there are levels of devils. I think it started in um, Ephesians six, ten to twelve, and it starts off. It says, um, "What's that? How's, what's the first word, y'all?" Come on, principalities, powers. Lord, no, oh, past that, past that. No, no, before that, powers, principalities, powers. Is like eleven or twelve, twelve. Rules of darkness and okay, so it's let you know, it's let you know the levels of the devil. Never fight a sergeant when you're a private because you'll lose in the ranks of the enemy. Is everybody with me now? You have to be very careful. Don't never go to a fight that Christ can tell you to because that principality may be stronger than you and it would eat you up. I'm I know you have Jesus, but you're not on that level yet. There are levels, you all. I want everybody to understand that there are levels. And you fight it. Let me tell you something. I, I know that um um who's that good fighter? Um, the boxer that retired, that was undefeated. Oh, Mate, Floyd Mayfeather. He ain't getting the, he ain't getting in the ring with um Holyfield. I know you're good. Or or, or Mike Tyson, you know. You, you stay at your weight class. You see, you stay at your weight class. But but Maybe well, I know you're blocking a lot of punches, but you ain't fighting no heavyweight. <laughs> you, you're, you're not fighting no Lewis. I mean, who, who's the guy who, who, who just won or even lost? You're not even fighting the loser of the heavyweight. you just <laughs> different weight class. That's why they have classes to protect you. Classes are protect you. The rankings, he told them before he said, I said, be strong, Lord. The rankings are protecting you because do not get into a fight that God never tell you to go in because you will lose. The son of Sceva said, let me tell you something, devil. We cast you out, and the Jesus that Paul knew, they ate him up. He said, okay, they ate him up. Take off the, um, rearing their clothes, they took him off running. I, it's very, very important. Be careful with what you say. But you know what they say, right? Be led by the Spirit. Okay, now, that wasn't even part of my topic. So now, we're going back. Um, in, in verse 14, it reads, and I'm sorry, we're still in James chapter 1. I'll reread verse 13. I'm sorry, I'm reading Amplify. I'm going back to James chapter 1 with verse 13. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for temptation does not originate from God, but from our flaws. For God cannot be tempted by what is evil, and he himself tempts no one. Who, who does God tempt? Verse 14, but each one is tempted when he is what? Okay, I need to hear everybody. But each one is tempted when he is dragged away, enticed and baited to commit sin by his own worldly desires, lust, and passion. Oh, this is powerful. This word is telling you where you're tempted. It talks about the flaws first, right? Then it says, but each one is tempted. Let me tell you how you're tempted. And you're only tempted when you're dragged away, enticed, and baited to commit sin by your own worldly desires. So now look, everybody's worldly desire is different. All the devil wants you to do is entice you, tease you, bring you out. Uh, we was at the bowling alley. Um, the, um, the guy, Mr. Thing, he's, he's buying people drinks. They said, um, Pastor D, uh, what those get they had free shots, free drinks because of our party. Say, Pastor, what you drinking? I said, Oh man, I'm drinking my drink. I want a Shirley Temple extra grenadine with extra cherries. They looked at me. You gonna waste this ticket on a Shirley Temple, you don't get a shot. I said, Man, I'm a real pastor now. I don't mess around. I want me. I told God I ain't drinking no hard liquor. I want me a Shirley Temple. Extra grenadine. And cherries. He said, I bet you ain't getting no girls like this. I said, I ain't need no girls. I don't need a drink to get girls. Can I just give me a shirt temple? Extra grenadine and cherries. Them other guys, they were slaving at the mouth. 
give me a, a, a Jack Daniels. Give me that um the the Red Bull something they had. They got these new drinks. Just solve it. I get a free drink. Just salivating it at the mouth. And then it, I'm like, they're like dolls ready for you. Food. Just just buying, just waiting for the food. That's how we are. Can't wait to see it. Can't just woohoo, they come in like it's the best moment. It's their best moment and their worst moment. They drink it when it's gone, they feel bad again. Waiting for the next fix. I get it. Feels good. When it's over, I want another fix. That's why crack, crack, crack cocaine was good. Last 10 minutes, and guess what then? It was cheap because it makes you want more. Sin or committing sin always makes you want more. Y'all have it? You got it? You understand? I was so proud of myself too. Nice of I didn't feel good, but I was so proud of myself. After eating my two chili dogs with all my fixes on it, man, on Friday, right? Man, it was Friday too. My Nathan Weenies. Y'all laughing, but that was my thing. It was like nine o'clock, boy. I wanted a ch another chili dog, boy. I fixed three for myself and I only ate two. And the first time I have to, the slice, the slice, um, bun where you can just open it up and just put it, just lay everything on the side. Ooh, boy. At nine o'clock. Uh, I didn't say I was hungry. I just said, I want that chili dog. <laughs> now, now, I'm looking at my stomach. I know Pastor Parker says gluttony is a sin, which is a true statement. Yeah, yeah, I know the Bible says blood is a sin. It's a sin. Let me tell you something. Just because I don't drink, I, I, hey, just because I don't drink don't mean I'm perfect. Or, and I don't cuss either. And I ain't sleeping around either. But food, ooh, is a flaw in my life. <laughs> no, 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 no. Good food. I ain't talking about this, uh, you know, I'm talking about some good chili dog, boy. I, 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 I ain't talking about no regular a regular weenie now. I'm talking about a good weenie. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about the good chili. I, I'm talking about the wolf brand chili with the cheddar. And right, we did it right, baby. With the cheddar cheese and, 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 and the jalapenos on that. Boy, boy, I'll tell you. And, and boy, and I was, I was, let me for lunch. <laughs> oh no, I was saving it for chili dogs. Oh boy, I say. Yeah, and, and, and so I'm 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 there, and and I because I, I looked at my stomach and said, "Man, my stomach getting a little big." And my wife said, "Cause you're eating." <laughs> Don't ever talk about compassion. <laughs> she said, "Baby, you just watch you eat." But you eating right there with me, you know. You should say something. And she said, and, and, and so she she had one, so it's two winnies in the pot. <laughs> two winnies just sitting there, calling my name, and and, and guess what? She put the food up and I'm mad at her. Why are you putting the food up? You don't, you know, you don't even, it's Friday. You should do it up. I'll put the food up. The weenies are up. The chili's up. So I, I'm thinking you all, I'm telling you my flaw now. Gluttony is a flaw. I'm like, I want another chili dog. My stomach's hit you full. I want another chili dog. Gluttony's a sin. I'm full. You know you fool. I mean, I mean, you feel, you know that you fool. But you know what it is? I have room for one more. <laughs> See, now I blame that on my, y'all don't get I have room. I have room. See, first of all, it, it's not my fault that I'm, it's my parents' fault. No, 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 no. It, hey, uh, it, uh, uh, oh, see. See, oh, oh now, now, oh now, now, oh now y'all wanna get, y'all wanna get loud. Yeah, y'all wanna get loud. Yeah. See, y'all wasn't this loud when I started talking about flaws, but my flaws, the whole church, I wish Facebook, they standing up and stuff, they going like this, but you said, that's okay. They'll be quiet in a minute, Facebook. <laughs> and, and, so, I blame my parents. And my flaw, I can blame because they said to me, eat everything on your plate. Am I right? It was raised like that. Okay. You eat everything on your plate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. the plate was empty. Hey, 
Even though the plate was empty, it was still food. Don't let food go away. <laughs> yeah, I was in my see. Now what I'm saying in my state that I was in, in, in my flaws, I am dueling with myself. See, that's the whole idea. And one part of me saying you don't need it. And the other part of me saying, buddy, I need it, but it, 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 I gotta, wait, hold on. I gotta have it and I don't need it. Hold on now, watch this. I don't need it, but I gotta have it. I want it. I gotta have this. Watch this. So, so my, my flaw is, but you know, I don't need it, right? Cause I'm full, but I gotta have it. Right? Yes, sir. Huh? What do you say? But yeah, we're not right. But, but we're not there yet. Yeah, yeah no, no, we're not there yet. We're not there. We're not there yet. No, no, no. See, the problem is, is you have to die daily. Everybody have flaws. See, watch where I'm going. You can always just watch this. I don't need a new cell phone. But I gotta have it. This is a, a Apple. This is an Apple 13, 14 just came out. I don't need one. This is old. It had for six months. It's old in phone years. It's old in phone years. I gotta have it. See, see, see there? <laughs> no, 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 sir. See, you, hey, hey, what's different about the phone? Does it, does it still ring? Does it still text? But it's still Google on that. So, so you still got your ways up. What you need one for? Don't need it. Got to have it. I'm playing with a PS4. PS5 come out. Don't need it. Oh, sit down. You ain't talking, Mike. <laughs> if I had the money, if you had the money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so watch this. See, see, that's a good point. If I had the money, I would have got it. So I'm only not sinning or yielding my flaw because I just don't have the money to get it. I don't need a new pair of black shoes. But I want a pair of shoes. I don't need, you, you go in the closet, got all these outfits. You don't not need any more outfits. You complain about the space that you have. If you ever complain about closing space, that should tell you something. Am I right? If you, if you, if you, if you complain about closing, if you complain about no more shoe space, it should tell you something, right? I don't need it. But I gotta have it. I am not thirsty. I do not need another shot. First of all, I don't even quench my thirst. I don't need it, but what? Got to have it. I don't need this pain drug. This pain. I, I, I don't need them. Have never needed, but but I got to have it. See, it's real. Paul is telling you it don't matter what the flaw is. You can't let that overtake you. I kind of, I let you know one of mine. We laughed about it. But we go down the road, everybody has a flaw. Everybody's struggling. And if you tell me you ain't struggling with something, then you're lying. I got a shirt in the closet that somebody gave me says, the struggle's real. You have to know that it's real. Your flaws are real. And the one thing you have to have is self-control. And, and, and once I lose that self-control, I have allowed the intruder to come in. Does everybody understand? I'm just being real. I've allowed it. See, I can joke and laugh at my, but, but the best thing I, I am with Christ and the best thing that Paul had is I recognize that I have a flaw. And not just recognize my flaw. I can identify with it and know my flaws. You want to tell you a, a, a person who don't know their flaws is, is a dangerous person. You need to know how the enemy comes. Why? Paul says, be not ignorant of Satan's devices. Because that's the one thing he's going to use again. He knows what he's, he's knowing he's going to throw this stuff at you because that's not going to get you. But he knows what you need. How? He's studying you. He's watching you. 
He knows the way you move. What you, he knows when you just looking at something, not saying nothing. He knows when you gaze on a long time. He knows it. Uh huh. Because he's he, he's on his smart. We just not on our mark. We have to be very careful that unwelcome intruder will come in. And it will cause me when I want to live right, when I want to do right, that one thing is holding me back. And, and let's be real. It's more than one thing. I have more than one flaw. If I had one, it'd be awesome. I have more than one flaw. And, and then, look, now, now let's get real. Everybody going to start. I could ask you to name one flaw, but it's a flaw that you can say out loud. But if I start to say name three of your flaws, say, well, you know, now you're getting personal. <laughs> And right now we're at a place is with this right here between me and God. Why well, between you and God? Because I don't want to talk to you about this law. <laughs> my, look, my spouse don't even know about this laws. But everybody got their secret flaws. But God knows that's not a secret. So yeah, you're right. Say knows. And so then in verse 14, but each one is tempted when he is dragged away, enticed and baited, committed sin by his own worldly desire. It's only by your own desires. Worldly, worldly desires, not a desire for God. If, if, if we had more, if we could turn our worldly desires into God's desires and our God desires to world, worldly desires, we will have way more God desires and worldly desires. It is something else that we have more worldly desires than God desires. Look, let's think about it. Let's talk about a godly desire. Uh, pray, praise, worship. Read the word. Four. <laughs> look, look. Y'all can't. We we have problems with the, the. We may get one of these. How? Let's talk about world desires. Come on. How? CD TV. Well, y'all can name these all off, right? No, no, no. Food. Yeah, food. Oh, y- 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 y'all left. A lot of people deal with food problems. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, y'all, y'all tripping about this, boy. A lot of people deal with food issues. You know, I, I hate. I can eat a whole, a whole, um, yeah, I stopped though. I leave three slices now. So, it, why you commenting on my flaws? I, I, I said, don't that obsession with someone coming in. She's not, she is not there to help me. She's there to identify me. I didn't ask for no identification at all. <laughs> now she's bragging. <laughs> so, 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 now you throw me off. See? You always have that one. <laughs> mate name, I won't say what the mate name is. I always just have that, that one. <laughs> everybody, everybody get that. Everybody get that. Y'all always have that one. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I won't say nothing about hers. But, but what, what, what I am saying is even though someone identify my flaws, I still have to be strong enough not to let that upset me. I have to be strong enough, and everybody's not that strong yet. Uh, uh, you know, you start if I start joking about y'all flaws, all y'all get mad and ready to leave the church. I can't believe you talking about me like that. <laughs> so you can talk about me, but I can't talk about you. Uh, all I'm saying is, that's, uh, yeah, so I'm just letting y'all know that it's recorded. I know who I can talk about next week. Because y'all talked about me. I'm okay with that. See? <laughs> See, now someone said, oh, yeah. but I didn't ask you to come in on my brought up. So anyway, don't, don't say nothing else, ma'am. I love it. <laughs> so, uh, but, but uh, it's, it's, real, it's really serious because if you seriously want to get help, you allow people to help you with your flaws. Right. Okay. So, I'm, uh, Amen. So the verse 15, y'all ready? We, okay, everybody has birthed something. Let me tell you something. Look up me. Everybody has birthed something. Everybody has birthed something. And it tells you in verse 15. It says, then when the illicit desire has what? It gives birth to sin. And when sin has run its course, it gives it birth death. Wow, did y'all see that? Then when the illicit desire the desire has conceived. I mean, you let it come in. It gives birth to what? Sin. And when sin has run its course, look, when, when, when sin gets done with you, let me tell you something, y'all don't, y'all don't get it. When sin is done with you, <laughs> when sin has put you in prison, put you in jail, got called the police on, 
when, when sin got you pulled over for something, when sin got the police call because you mistreated someone, or when sin got caused you to lose your job, it brings forth. When it sin's got, when sin is through with you, if you don't get delivered, when it's through with you, it gives birth to death. Y'all with me now? Last verse we're going to. Amen. Go to First Peter chapter four. We're going to First Peter chapter four. First Peter chapter four, and I'm reading from the, um, I believe it's the Amplified. First Peter chapter four. Yes, it is. First Peter chapter four. And um, these are my, this will be my last verse. And I challenge you on First Peter um, to, to read at least five of the verses, but I'm going to start at verse one. First Peter chapter one. Therefore, First Peter chapter four, verse one. For, yes, therefore, since Christ suffered in the flesh and died for us, arm yourselves like warriors with the same purpose, being willing to suffer for doing what is right and pleasing to God. Now, look, this is what it says. Suffer. Yes, my body wanted the chili dog. I had to put it on. I had to suffer. I'm just using it as it, it's, it may be simple to y'all, but it's not simple to me. I have to suffer. Why? Suffer for doing what is right and for pleasing to God. God didn't want me to have a gluttony spirit. He's trying to work on me. He said, you have to suffer with it. Mean suffer me. It's my own doing. I'm talking about my own doing. I got to suffer. I got to fight to make this thing right. You understand that? That's why I said before, be a warrior. He says, what? Um, what it says, um, arm yourselves like what? Warriors with the same purpose, being willing to, to suffer for doing what's right and pleasing to God because what whoever has suffered where? In the flesh. Wait, let's say it again. Because whoever has suffered where? Being like-minded with Christ is done. Is done. Y'all see that? Is done. Let me say it is done because whoever has suffered in the flesh being like minded with Christ is done with what? With intentional sin. I, when I'm like minded with Christ is tell you that it's done and not is going to be done. Stick a fork in it is done with what? Intentional sin having stopped pleasing the world. So that he can no longer spend the rest of his natural life living for human appetites and desires, but lives for the will and purpose of God. I'm done what I used to do. I'm done. Why I'm done? I'm being like-minded with Christ. I'm done living like I used to, making them flawless. I'm done with it. Why? All it takes is to be like-minded with Christ. I have to get this unwelcome intruder out of my life. And why it's unwelcome is because I'm the one to let it in. But if I knew that he's going to cause this much problems in my life, I would not have done it and allowed him to come in. But as I said before, sin lies at the door waiting for me to let him in. He says, but I have given you rule or dominion over that. Do not ever let it control you. You control it. Amen? Amen. I thank y'all for joining on Facebook. I hope you had a great time. We will fin we will um, talk about this on next week of our series. And I pray that you, if you want to keep studying the scriptures, and go ahead and read First Peter 1, um, chapter 4, um, 1 through 5. Because, I mean, it talks about a whole lot of things. But I tell you this, the word is true and let everything else be a lie. If you're not saved, we can help you to live a saved life, a holy life, if you say. But we thank you and we'll see you on next week. Amen.